Hello guys and welcome, my name is Solin and today I want to show you how to build a big capacity power bank with fast charging and quick charging protocols using a few components that you can buy online. It may look suspicious, but don't worry, it's a power bank. I chose this ABS junction box because I think it's nice to see the LED displays and the other components inside. Actually, I wanted this clear cover so I could brag about it to my friends. These are the components we need to build it, plus three small heatsinks. This power bank has two USB outputs. I will use a simple 3 amp step down converter for the normal USB output and the cute tiny module for the fast charging port. But if you want your power bank to have multiple fast charging ports, you can use this double USB module. Let's test this fast charging module first. My variable power supply will represent the battery pack. I will set it to 21 volts. Whoops, sparks, that's not good. Does it still work? Let's try it with this USB tester. Yes it does. This is Samsung Adaptive Fast Charging with 9 volts. For the normal charging output, initially I wanted to use this 3 amps USB converter. But even with a 2 amps load, it gets very hot in only a few seconds. That's not good for a closed and crowded enclosure with lithium cells. So I chose the popular LM2596 step down converter instead. The fast charging module needs a supply voltage of maximum 32 volts, so a 7S battery pack with 29.4 volts will have the highest efficiency and energy for this project. For more information about how to choose the battery pack and DC converter for your project, you can click my video up here. But there isn't enough room for 7 cells, so I will go with a 6S battery pack made with these new NCR18650B lithium-ion cells. I still don't have a spot welder, so I got this type of cells with nickel strips already attached. No more recovered laptop cells for this episode, I want only the good stuff. But before soldering anything, let's test these new cells with my Opus charger. The cell voltage is 3.9 volts, which is good for long storage and transport. I will start the charging process with 500 milliamps and later set it to 700 milliamps. And after 3 cycles of charging and discharging, the real capacity is revealed, around 3.2 amp hours. This is pretty good considering their price. These lithium cells have the positive tip attached, but the negative terminal is actually the entire cell housing, so it's not a good idea to hit it with the soldering gun. The cells will be connected in series, so I will cut the negative nickel strip of each cell and solder it later to the positive tip of the next cell. These are simple plastic spacers for the 18650 size cells. I tried different setups and I think this is the best position for the cells. Now I need to place each cell into the holder, but you need to check if it's better to start with the positive or the negative terminal, depending on the BMS board position. Also be careful not to cut yourself with the nickel strips, they are very feisty. Now I need to solder the nickel strip of each cell to the positive tip of the next cell. Even though I put solder on the nickel strips and not touch the cell directly, I still need to move very fast. It's better to use a powerful soldering gun so you don't doze off while hitting the cell. This battery pack will have maximum 25.2 volts and the capacity of 3200 milliamp hours. The capacity may seem small, but remember this battery pack has 6 lithium cells in series with a total energy of 70 watt hours. In fake video math, that's 19,200 milliamp hours. Wow! I'll remove all unnecessary plastic clips. The space is limited inside the box, as it always is in my projects. Another option is to tighten the cells with electrical tape. This way the battery pack will be a few millimeters smaller. But I prefer plastic holders for this project, because I want some space between the cells, so the cooling will be a bit better. Especially because this is a closed enclosure with modules that can get hot. This 6S BMS board will take care of the lithium cells, it has all the needed protection features. First I will remove these small metal plates with my old and trusty soldering gun. They are used to attach the nickel strips with a spot welder, so I don't need them. 
I already measured, cut and connected the balance leads to the lithium cells. But first the cells need to be insulated. With all these exposed battery terminals and wires hanging around, there's a high risk of short circuit. Now I can finish soldering the wires. I will add a few pieces of strong double-sided foam tape to the BMS board and battery pack. I will stick them to the power bank case later. To charge the battery I got this 2 amps charger, usually these adapters are less powerful than their rated values, that's why I got the 2 amps unit instead of 1 amp. But let's test it, I will use my DIY voltmeter slash ammeter to measure the output voltage and current. These ceramic resistors will represent the load, 1 amp and 25.1 volts. Let's increase the load, 1.5 amps at 24.9 volts. And now 2 amps. The voltage dropped a bit to 24.7 volts, but hey, it can really deliver 2 amps. This charger is very good. I want to fit the components in this ABS junction box. It may look too big for a power bank, but keep in mind there is a 6S battery pack and a lot of modules, some of which will get hot. These plastic spacers are not needed, I'll remove them with a cutter. I need only flat surfaces inside the box. Next I will remove the plastic standoffs with my unpowered Dremel. Protective goggles are mandatory. First I will use a rotary saw blade. Then I will use this Dremel milling bit to remove any plastic leftovers and make the surface flat. Now we have only nice flat surfaces. I need a simple round hole for the charging connector. For the on off switch there is a bit more work, I need to use the cutter, but that's not something I'm afraid of. Now here comes the difficult part, I'll use the milling tool to make the holes for the two USB connectors. The two holes are not identical because I use different USB modules. For the normal charging port I will use a simple USB breakout, but the circuit board needs to be cut. The data pins are shorted with a blob of solder and I'll connect only two wires thick enough to carry at least two amps. I will use hot glue to stick it to the panel. It is time to place the battery pack in position. I will also use a few drops of hot glue to stick the plastic holders to the case, just to be sure. The charging connector needs three wires, two long ones are for the BMS board and the shorter positive wire will go through the switch and power the modules. This is a simple USB tester, I will modify it and then connect it to the fast charging module output. I want my power bank to include a voltmeter and ammeter that shows the voltage and current when I connect different phones to the fast charging port. This feature is not mandatory but I think it looks better with it. This USB tester has the smallest LED display I could find, so it's perfect for my project. I just need a piece of its semi-transparent plastic case to cover the LED display, it will make it more visible in daylight. I will use a bit of hot glue to stick the plastic cover. It will be connected directly to the module output, so you may be wondering why I removed the USB plug and not just simply join them together through the USB connectors. Let me show you what the problem is. This is my USB load tester, it's connected to a simple charger and you can see it's showing more than 1 amp. But when I connect more USB testers in series, you can see that the voltage and current values are decreasing towards the final load. That's because these USB connectors don't make a perfect contact, each connection adding a resistance in series with the load. But before soldering the modules I want to add some heat sinks. I will use thermal glue to stick them to the integrated circuits. Be careful with the heatsink on this small circuit board, it only needs to touch the IC, not other components. You can easily short that tiny capacitor. I will also add a small heatsink to the step down converter IC, it gets a bit hot when it delivers more than 1 amp. This is a closed enclosure, there isn't a lot of cooling going on. Now I need to wait a while until the glue dries, in the meantime I will show you my fat cat. Later I will add another heatsink to the fast charging module, 
but first I need to solder the wires to the USB output. I think this is the only place I can mount the charging modules, so I will place two layers of sticky foam tape between the modules and the lithium cells, it will act as heat insulation. Now I can stick the BMS board to the side panel. Next the charging modules will be placed very carefully in position. This is the schematic for this project, it's not very difficult, just take it step by step. And if you want to see extra footage and video updates, you can check out my Patreon campaign. From now on I will use only the soldering station, there isn't enough room for my fat soldering gun anymore. I want to mask the wires as much as possible, that's why I left some space around the battery pack. That and also for cooling. These two wires go to the switch, oops, I accidentally turned on the power bank. Hey, it works! Well, at least the blue LED works. The switch contacts will be insulated with shrinking tubes. The normal charging part is almost finished, I just need to set the output voltage to 5.0 something volts. And a quick test, 2 amps, perfect. The USB tester is ready to be mounted, it has a small piece of electrical tape around the USB port, the hot glue must not get inside. I will use a few layers of sticky foam tape in the back, I don't want it to touch the cells. The USB wires will be soldered next, the positive and negative wires need to be thick enough to deliver 4 amps. The data wires can be thinner, they are used by the phone to negotiate the charging method with the module. The USB tester is in position, now I can add hot glue. As I mentioned earlier, I will add another heatsink to the fast charging module. The only available place to stick it is on the inductor, the entire module will get hot so this will help. We need a 6S battery indicator, but where shall I place it, there is no more space available. I will use sticky foam tape and fix it to the lithium cells, the circuit board must not touch the cells, so the foam tape will act as a spacer. The battery indicator wires can be soldered anywhere on the battery pack output, but after the switch. And now comes this beautiful part, very satisfying. Even though these cells are new, I want to add a 3 amps fuse on the battery pack positive wire, and I will cover it with shrinking tube. It looks a bit scary so far, but don't worry it's just a power bank. Well, not just a power bank, it's a big capacity fast charging power bank that can charge two devices simultaneously. I just need to screw the clear cover now. And it's finished, but it looks a bit weird, I don't think I can take it with me to the airport. Let's test it with my Samsung, when the phone display turns off, the charging current goes to 1.6 amps at 9 volts. Let's try Huawei Nova 5T. The charging current goes up to 4 amps. I already used my new power bank a few times with other phones and it works fine. It can charge a phone 4 or 5 times depending on the capacity of the phone battery. Now it's almost discharged, I want to test the over discharge protection feature, I will connect a voltmeter to the charging port, because the current goes both ways. A simple light bulb will discharge what's left of this battery. And when the battery voltage gets down to 16.5 volts, the BMS board turns off the power bank. If the cells are balanced, that means 2.75 volts per cell, that's nice. Now I will charge the power bank and monitor the charging cycle with my volt ammeter. The charging starts with 2 amps and the voltage rises pretty fast. After 20 minutes the battery indicator already shows 2 green bars. 40 minutes and 3 green bars. All green bars are lit on the battery indicator. At this moment the battery pack is getting charged with 50 watts of power. The lithium cells are warming up a bit, but that's ok considering that they are charged with 2 amps in a closed enclosure, the BMS board is not hot.
but if you plan to use recovered cells, I suggest you get a 1 amp charger. The battery pack voltage is getting close to 25 volts, so the charging current is decreasing. The voltage is 25.2 volts, the cells are almost fully charged. The current dropped to 20 milliamps and remained there, why doesn't the charging stop? But wait, if I turn off the power bank we can see that it's fully charged, so the LED displays and DC converters use 20 milliamps. If I turn off the power bank while charging it, it will take less than 3 hours to fully charge it. That's pretty fast. So this is my big capacity fast charging power bank. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, share and subscribe and if you want to see extra footage and more videos, you can check out my Patreon campaign. Bye!